so thank you very much, Teresa, for the introduction. Thank you for the great speakers we've had already this morning and the really inspiring things that we've already said. I was struck by the very last thing that Nazim was saying about how uh, publishers and librarians are all working together. Well, we all have the same goal, and that is actually why that's actually the basis of this, of this talk, really. So um, as we're thinking about the various challenges of the complex systems that we work in, both in international development and in publishing, this is just a whirlwind tour of some of the ways, some of the things going on in the research and knowledge sector in the Global South, why it's important to support it, and why the, the support of scholarly publishers is making such a difference. So, I seem to have my voice. So I am actually from a, a research background originally, and then for many years in a scholarly publishing background, and I have to say it was quite a surprise to me to move to international development and see such a difference in the kind of language that we use, the way that we talk about things, and the sort of ways to define impact, I suppose. And I rec we recognize at INASP that a lot of the people in this room who are really strong supporters of what we do and what the likes of Research for Life do and what our partners in across the Global South do, it's hard sometimes to communicate that back to other people in publishers. So uh, first of all, I want to just inspire you. This Together we've achieved great things. Um, so this is partly a celebration of stories, partly a thank you uh, to all our, our many partners. So at INASP, we believe that research and knowledge have a crucial role to play in addressing global challenges and contributing to the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Oh, I'm sorry, we've gone too far. Uh, so there's many different ways, although most of the people in this room know us primarily through the access work, there's a whole range of ways that we are doing this, in, that we're helping this in different ways. And so there's a few stories that I'm going to share that hopefully you can take back, you can share. We'll be, we've created a much longer version of this slide slideshow that you can take back and use in, in your company meetings or in any other ways that this might be useful to you, we'd be very happy to share these kind of resources. So uh, my first little snippet story, this is uh, one of my personal favorites um, because I have personal passion for um, addressing climate change. This is a group of people from the African Center for Technology and they, in 2015, got to speak at the landmark Paris Climate Change Conference, the one that's been in the news a lot lately. Um, of course, through a fairly small grant through INASP's evidence-informed policy-making work, um, ACTS brought together climate scientists and policymakers in Kenya. They ran a program of roundtables and work shadowing over the course of a year, and as a result, Kenya was able to develop a climate change bill that passed into law um, because it was grounded on evidence and local knowledge. Uh, they were then invited to go and speak in Paris about this so that other countries could continue, could consider similar approaches. Moving eastward very slightly from Kenya, my next story is from Somalia. This, uh, so decades of conflict have taken their toll on Somalia's mental health but research, research into and approaches for treating mental health issues haven't kept pace with this demand. Uh, one of the issues that researchers in Somalia, as in many other places in the global south, face is the challenge of getting their work published. Um, and some of our previous speakers have mentioned AuthorAid and the support of AuthorAid. Andy and Jen are going to be speaking a bit more about that later, but uh, this is this in the middle here is, is Jibril Handela um, from Djibouti and Somalia. And he was struggling to get his research published until he joined the AuthorAid network. He took an online research writing course and got, on, got a mentor. Uh, very quickly after that, he then was able to publish 50, uh, papers in 15 journals over the course of two years. And he developed his own clinic 
He's currently in Germany studying to develop his skills further so he can take those back to Somalia and Djibouti and uh, continue to build the country's mental health provision. And now we move on to a story that's related to the access work. Um, this is a nice story, I, I think, because it tells something of a complete picture. Often we provide access and then we don't know what happens next. We know that it makes a big difference to research, but actually it's quite rare to then hear the very end of the process and what happens. So this is, um, this is from Tanzania. These are female farmers in Tanzania, in rural Tanzania. Um, Tanzania benefits from many e-resources uh, through international, from international publishers through the Cotel Consortium. So last year, uh, we provided, INAS provided a small grant to a group of um, entrepreneur students, um, well, basically to the library that served this group of entrepreneur students, in order for the library to trans to train these students in how to use e-resources. And what happened is, with better knowledge of how to use the e-resources that they had access to, these entrepreneur students looked at research going on in Nigeria and Ghana into improving cassava production, so a staple crop in Tanzania and in many places um, in Africa. And they then used this knowledge from Nigeria and Ghana to train female farmers in rural Tanzania in how they could use these techniques in their farming. And the result was improved yields. Um, and also, these female farmers then were able to share seeds with other farmers. Um, so it's a nice story. We've got case studies about all of these things outside. So do take them away and also do ask. These are, these are very much a whirlwind tour of things. I'd uh, just like to tell you briefly about uh, work with uh, campus, uh, campus networks. We hear, we, it's very important to have access to information, but actually there's a physical need for good network connectivity. Uh, as Santhi was earlier saying about the, the challenges of not being able to get the internet in her office, uh, INASP has been working with um, groups of campus engineers with uh, NRENs in various countries in, in Africa in helping to address that problem on a local level, to help address that last 100 meters so that people can actually access physically the things they have access to virtually. Uh, now we move to Bangladesh to um, away. Yes? Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, it does say Nepal on the slide. <laughs> now we move to Nepal, <laughs> slick as can be. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I think I was going to put a Bangladesh story in, and then I put a Nepal story in, because I knew we had a Bangladesh story already. Uh, so climate change, of course, is a major challenge for many places and for many farmers. And some research published in the a journal on the Nepal Journal's online platform, which was part of our press release program, which we've been helping to get some greater exposure for some of this research. Um, this, uh, this research found that changing the, the timing of planting rice could make a massive difference to the crop yields. And, and so we can tell you more about that. Sorry, I was slightly thrown by the the Bangladesh and Nepal thing there. Um, so this is just one of the many things that's published in Journals on the Journals Online platform. And just going to do a little sneak peek of something that we're going to be talking about a lot later in this year, hoping the acronym JPPS will become a household name. And somewhere my colleague Sue is, she's uh, waving there at the back. So. INASP is com committed to c improving the reach and quality of Southern journals through the Journals Online program, which we've been doing for many years, and Sue leads. Um, so for many years, we've had activities training in publishing practices, and now we are going to be launching a, a method of 
sort of assessing, evaluating, adding, adding things that, that basically say, describe how, how journals uh, are, how, how journals are performing in terms of things like peer review and ethics and copyright and all of the different kinds of things that we know are really important to journals. And um, so look out for the JPPS and do talk to Sue to find out more information. We'll be launching this officially later in the year, so you can have a little sneak peek now. My, my last story is perhaps less dramatic, but it's my own story. So uh, in addition to the things I do on a day-to-day -day basis in, in ASP, I'm, a, I'm an author aid mentor, and maybe some people in this room are author aid mentors. And if you're not, and if you're in a position to help people by offering mentoring, I really recommend it. It is, it's just great. For me, who was a chemist for many years and then hasn't been a chemist for many years, I just love to get papers and get a chance to, to read them and to, and to share what I know from my own experience of publishing and also editing experience. And it can make a difference. So this is a quote from one of my mentees. Uh, obviously, I won't read it out because it's a little bit... You know, it's, it's a glowing, <laughs> glowing endorsement of my mentoring, which is good. But it's actually little things can make a massive difference. So, and I need to apologize. We have, we have a video I was going to show you now. And I, we will share it on Twitter and share it later in the day. Uh, had a few technical issues this, um, with this. But last year, in celebration of all that we've been doing collectively, we entered the collaboration between INASP publishers and library consortia into an international development uh, competition, and we were shortlisted. We created a video as part of that process that it was part of the competition, but also that everybody is very welcome to share. It's, it's our story, but it's also your story, and it shares how we can all work together to make a difference. And hopefully, at the end of the day, we'll be able to show that to you. Uh, so I just want to say, lots of these things, they, there's a, actually a very small, relatively small amount of money can make a massive difference. And just working together, it makes a massive difference. So thank you for, for all that you do. Please do ask us for more information. And we will be sharing a much extended, expanded version of these slides that you can use yourselves. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>